Hi, this is Jared Valeski, Range and Forge Specialist with the UNL West Central Research and Extension Center in North Platte. Today's webinar, we're going to be talking about planning annual forage systems. Now, there's been considerable interest in annual forages the last couple of years uh, for some producers. Uh, uh, a pasture is uh, hard to find or make, they may consider the pasture rent uh, that's being asked a little too high. Uh, similarly, we can have dealing with some relatively low grain prices right now, and that may not necessarily pencil out for, for a lot of people. So we've got these producers thinking about converting some of their existing cropland to annual forages for grazing. With these systems, I think an important objective is having an extended continuous period of time with available forage to be grazed. Uh, now this might uh, include say from the month of May all the way uh, through October or if we included and planned to have some stockpile forages we could even extend that into uh, the late fall and winter months. These systems they generate a lot of questions when we're thinking about putting the plans together for them. Things like what and when should I plant? How should I manage it? Manage it? What will be the seeding rates? Fertilization and so on. Something that's very important is giving thought to how many acres will I need and of course associated with that what is going to be the stocking rate or the head per acre that I will um, graze and for how long. What is the forage quality and what kind of animal performance or gain will we see from these forages. Are there animal health issues? Certainly things like uh, nitrates or plastic acid can be an issue. Uh, what if something goes wrong in terms of, say, the production amount or level wasn't what I thought it would be, and I'm, I'm running short of grazing forage? And then lastly, uh, very important, what are the economics? So within this webinar, we're going to be touching on a few of these specific questions here and hopefully provide you with some useful information. Now, when it comes to these annual forage systems, uh, most often a mixture or a combination, I should say, of both cool and warm season annuals are used. These charts show different uh, cool and warm season growth patterns for both cool and warm season annuals. In the top one, for example, we're dealing with a spring planted cool season annual, late March planting. Growth relatively slow that first first month, but during that month of May, it'll really pick up and, and max out in, in June. Uh, in the second chart, warm season annual planted in late May. Uh, the first couple, two, three weeks, they do appear to be quite slow in their growth. But uh, once uh, we get to July, in the case of this planting, we'll have very rapid growth uh, through the warm summer months. And in the bottom chart, we have a cool season annual that is planted mid to late summer. In my example, we are planting, say, in mid to late July. With these and those warm soil temperatures at this time, the early growth is really quite rapid. Uh, max, uh, max is out in, in uh, September. And then once we get into October, it uh, declines quite rapidly. There are a number of different cool and warm season annuals could be used for the cool seasons. The small grain cereals like oats, spring triticale, spring barley, they're very uh, commonly used. It can be other things such as field peas within these mixtures and several other legumes and broadleaf species, annual ryegrass, a number of different brassica which includes the turnips and radishes. On the warm season annual side, uh, we could have the pearl or foxtail millets, the sorghum sedan grass hybrids, forage sorghum, sedan grass. Um, there's a number of other different uh, warm season grass types that could be used as well. Now, in some cases, the cover crops or forage cocktails, which uh, can, can, can contain some pretty complex mixtures, uh, and sometimes both cool and warm season, they could be used in these situations as well. Now, this table here illustrates an example of a system. I've got uh, three fields illustrated here. In the first field, we have the first activity taking place of planting a cool season uh, annual forage. 
that would take place mid to late uh, March, a little bit into April. This could be, for example, some oats, so spring crude kale, field peas, or mixtures of these different annual cool season annuals. Typically, they would be ready for grazing about the third to fourth week of May. Uh, and on the chart here, that's illustrated in the green color. They will typically provide about six weeks of grazing, so they would be finished up or grazed out by the early part of July. After those, the cool season is grazed out, we would come back in and also or replant another cool season. So we're talking mid, late July there. And that would be allowed to grow and accumulate growth until um, basically October when it would be grazed for about two months during that time of the year. Now on another field, uh, illustrated as field two, two, that's the middle line, that particular field would be planted to a warm season annual forage roughly in uh, mid to late May, early June. That's kind of illustrated in the uh, tan colored uh, box there. Those warm season annuals uh, would be ready for grazing uh, roughly about the second week of July and could potentially be grazed for the remainder of July, August, and into September. Now after that warm season, um, annual is grazed out um, in late September there, uh, early October. I do have an option there of planting a winter annual, so something like rye or triticale, winter wheat. And with that, that particular um, planting there would be grazed the following spring. Also in this uh, system example, I list a third field or some third uh, different acres that are also have a uh, cool season annual planted uh, again in that early spring period, March to early April, and it would be grazed um, similarly to uh, the field number one, or it could be hayed. But one of the difference is that in this particular field, right after that is grazed out or hayed off, one could plant a warm season annual there in, in uh, mid July and then the growth from that warm season annual would be um, accumulated and stockpiled for late fall and winter grazing. Another example here, system B, uh, just two fields. It shows the use of another double crop system in field one would have been planted to uh, a winter annual cereal, something like uh, again, rye or triticale would have been planted the previous fall, but the advantage of those fall planted winter annuals is that you can get much earlier grazing than any of the spring planted ones. So that be grazed in uh, uh, lighter, lighter part of April and May. When it was grazed out by late May, you would plant a warm season annual in those acres. And then again, grazing for the warm season occurring during July, August, and September. And after the warm season out, if you're going to continue in that system, you could plant back uh, another uh, winter annual like the rye or triticale. On another field, second field, we would have uh, a spring planted cool season forage. Again, those not ready for grazing till third or so week of May. Um, and then and would last for about that six week period um, into, into July. And then after those were grazed out, come back with uh, a cool season forage mixture again for uh, October and November grazing. Um, when it comes to the grazing of these and planting stocking rates, uh, one of the best ways uh, we can approach this is by knowing what our typical um, production would be. And in this case, it's on a hay basis. So this table just shows some of the yield of spring seeded oats. Uh, roughly averaging about three tons per acre over the good number of different years that I did this. For the warm season annuals, uh, typically we're talking about the yields, hay yields of four to five or more tons per acre for those taller growing species, a little bit less for, for some of the things like the uh, foxtail millet or, or teff. 
Well, when it comes to grazing, one of the things we do have to keep in mind that uh, generally the, the grazing is not as efficient as haying. We don't get it all, in other words. Uh, we have the trampling losses that occurs. And then also uh, just the, the fact that uh, grazing, while these plants are actively growing, it may reduce or take away some of the growth potential. Now, these tables here illustrate uh, some of the approximate stocking rates uh, for the spring planted cool seasons. Um, it is based on a grazing efficiency of, of 50%, meaning that 50% of what is produced out there will be consumed and the rest will be uh, uh, losses associated with trampling and, and just the fact of, of the grazing that grazing is taking place. Um, I base it off of potential hay yield here and using two and a half tons per acre, for example, uh, on a hay basis, which is certainly uh, just an, an average stand of one of these spring seeded cool seasons. We're talking about uh, potential to have 3.2 or so AUMs per acre, or if we look at it on a cow-calf pair per acre basis for one and a half months or six weeks, we're talking about a, a stocking capacity of, of 1.4 pairs per acre. Now, for cool seasons again, but we're talking about those planted in uh, mid to late summer for the fall use, again with 50% uh, grazing efficiency, and again using the two and a half ton estimated hay yield, uh, we're talking there about having one, a little over one cow calf pairs per acre, but we're talking about a two month period. Now in these tables here, if we're grazing different classes of cattle, you can do some quick calculations to convert those pairs to, uh, in this case, yearlings, or if you have just freshly weaned calves, you could uh, and multiply that by three to get the the uh, number per acre that you could potentially graze. For the uh, warm season annuals, these would be the early pl summer planted warm season annuals, higher productivity. If we use uh, on average a four ton per acre estimate of our hay yield, there we're talking a little over four AUMs per acre. Um, and depending on the number of months that we would graze this, and I'll use three months for example, that means we probably could be stocking at about uh, just under uh, one cow-calf pair for per acre. Some other things that are that are really important, I think, is uh, it's nice to have some flexibility in the stocking. Um, some animals, uh, you know, are a place to move some animals if our growth isn't what we expect, and, and that's tied in along with having some nearby or backup pasture. Some people, uh, if they do have extra acres available, they will plant those uh, just as a backup or a buffer. If, for whatever reason, uh, they need to graze them, they can, but if not, they may just hay them, okay? And again, I mentioned some of the things on nitrates and prussic acid, which uh, you can certainly do some internet searches, and we have other publications specifically on, on some of those. This uh, particular table um, provides an example of uh, how to estimate the number of acres needed, and I'll use a 100 cow-calf pairs as the example number of cattle that we're trying to provide grazing for. So it's also tied in with uh, that first system or table one that we looked at. And so in field one, where we had the spring planted cool season, month and a half of grazing, we came up with the estimate of about 1.4 two pairs per acre is uh, what we'll um, have on there. So we take our 100 pairs, divide by 1.42, tells us that we'll need 70 acres of that uh, cool season annual planted in the spring. Now for the warm season, late May, uh, early June planted, we're going to graze it say three months. Again, from the previous table, we'll use that estimate of 0.91 pairs per acre. Same way, 100 divided by 0.91 tells us about 110 acres of that warm season annual is what we would need. For the fall grazing, again, we're back on field one, replanting, a second planting of the cool season forage. We're going to graze at two months, so we're a little bit less on the pairs per acre, 1.07. Uh, we would need about 93 acres of that uh, mid-late summer planted cool season. 
if we were going to continue this system to the following year with um, uh, some fall planted uh, winter annual like the rye or triticale next spring a month and a half of grazing there we'd probably go with again the 1.42 pairs per acre telling us we need about 70 um, acres of that uh, winter annual planted in this table here we have some of the uh, basic economics uh, estimated um, using the um, system a example and so the, we would encourage you to um, plug in some of your own numbers uh, and into this type of format just to see how things might pencil out for you but uh, in our tables here we list the uh, expectations basically in terms of uh, um, how much seed we're going to be using how many uh, acres uh, per pair or pairs per acre that we'd want to be grazing out there the number of days how much fertilizer and irrigation estimates are included in here as well. Then also some of our different costs such as the seed, seeding, fertilizer, and so on. And then uh, this, with this can come up with the forage cost per acre and then also um, the system forage cost. In other words, the most important one being the cost per pair per month. And so you can see some of the, the values here that we have for our um, examples um, that we came up with. Uh, the table here also has it for the system B. Again set up in the same same type of format for the different uh, spring, summer, and fall forages that we planted and then the amounts of each we used and the expected uh, uh, stocking from them. And then again coming up with an estimated uh, forage cost uh, and assisted forage cost per pair per month. So with that, uh, I'd encourage you, we have a number of other resources available on annual forages. And currently at the beef.unl.edu website, we have the full publication, Planning Annual Forage Systems, uh, from which this webinar was based on. Thank you.